Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so excited once again to be with you on this Monday. I am excited because God has something special in store for you tonight. Listen, as I was preparing um, this word, God had already given me a topic, so I had been working on it. But then in the midst of me going upstairs to get a charger or something, God began to tell me, he said, tell them on tonight. Here we go. He said, tell them on tonight that they are the curse breakers. I don't know what that means to you. I don't know how that's going to um, settle in your spirit on tonight. He said, but tell them that they are the curse breakers. He said, anything in your family, listen, he said, anything in your family, he said, tonight it stops with you. He said, you are the one that will stop the curse. You are the one that will put an end to poverty. Listen, you are the one that will stop the, the um, debt. Can't, you would cancel debt that's on your bloodline. Listen, he began to tell me, he said, tell them that they, the reason why the warfare, come on now. He said, the reason why the warfare has been so great is because you're the curse breaker. He said, this thing stops with you. He said, you're fam coming from a family that never owned properties, coming from a family that never owned land. He said, coming from a family that, that never um, had a lot, a lot of money. He said, you are the one that's going to stop the curse. Listen, he said, it's not only, okay, here we go. He said, he's saying it is not only with the um, owning, owning land, owning property. He said, some of you are going to break the curse of never getting ahead. Some of you are going to break the curse, listen to this, of, of, of I'm not good enough, low self-esteem. He said, you are the curse breaker. Oh my God, here we go. And, and, and so I begin to say, okay, Lord, so they're the curse breakers. What, because I know whenever he do this, it has to be a connection. And God began to tell me, he said, yes, the connection is that they can't be, he said, listen, daughter, he said, in order for them to break the curse, they got to be in the right position. Oh my God. I hope you have shared this live. I hope you have put it on your page because this is what the enemy does not want you to know. Listen, what he wants to do, because you are the curse breaker, listen, what he wants to do is get you out of position. In order to break the curse, you have to be in the right position. Listen, listen. So what, so what God is giving us on tonight is being in position for a miracle. He says, tell them that many of them have prayed, many of them have fasted, many of them are believing. He said, but are they in the right position? I said, okay, God, okay, God, I, I don't need know. And so then I, as I was working on that, um, because God will just give me a word in position. And I'm like, okay. And then it, it, it'll just come in pieces and then it'll all come together. So he said, in position for a miracle. Tell them they have to be in position for the miracle. He said, they cannot, listen to this, because this is going to bless you. He said, they cannot get agitated. They cannot get aggravated because it's in the fourth quarter. Oh my God, here we go. He said, you can't get agitated or aggravated because it is in the fourth quarter. He said, your timing is not my timing. Neither are your ways my ways. He says, my thoughts are higher than yours. Listen, he says, so you have to understand that the main thing that matters is not the timing, listen, but that you are in the right position. Okay, watch this. So I begin to, to do a little research and, and God began to say they have to be in position for a miracle. So a miracle is a supernatural event that seems inexplainable. You can't explain it. You can't put it on paper. It don't make sense. It don't make sense that you own what you own. It don't make sense that you've been healed like you've been healed. It don't make sense that you come out of, listen, curse breakers, that you come out of what has plagued your family for generations. And now here you come and you're breaking the curse on your on your bloodline. So it won't make sense what God is going to do to do with you and through you. He says that is why they have to be in position. Watch this. He says that is why they have to be in position because a miracle, listen, he says a miracle is something that cannot be explained. Man cannot explain it. Your family cannot explain it. You can't explain it. But what did God tell us on last week? 
on your testimony is going to be that God did it. Who am I talking to tonight? He says your testimony in this season, in these months, will be God did it. Why? Because you're going to be in position for a miracle. Watch this. So a miracle again. It cannot be explained. So quit trying to make it make sense. Oh my God. And listen, and when God performs the miracle, and when God performs the miracle, I hear you, Holy Ghost. When God performs the miracle, he says, you don't have to explain it to nobody. Your testimony will be God did it. That's the only explanation they need. They don't need to know what lender you went to. They don't need to know what bank you went to. They don't need to know how you inherited. They don't need to know how it came into your lap. He says, all they need to know is God did it. That's going to be your testimony. Watch this. Let's go to Mark 8, and I'm going to start at 22 through 26. Mark 8, 22 through 26. Here we go. And they came to Bethesda. And some people brought him, brought to him a blind man and begged him. They begged God to touch him, begged Jesus to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and he led him. Oh, my God. That he led him out of the village. And when he spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see Anything. And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on him again, second time, laid his hands on him again, and he opened his eyes and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Oh my God, I'm about to work this one. He saw everything clear. So first, first let's deal with this place called Bethesda. Listen, Bethesda means House of Mercy. Oh, God. House of Mercy. It had five porches on it. And under the porches was where they usually brought all the people that were lame, that were sick. That's where they put them. They put them under the porch. They had five porches. And they waited for the troubling of the water. Listen, I'm about to work this because the trouble in the water is what's going to get them in trouble later. Watch this. So they would, they would lay the people there that were sick, that were, had any type of infirmity, they laid them under the five porches and they waited for the troubling of the water. But these two people found themselves, listen, but this time, the blind man found himself at the right place at the right time. He was in position. It was an issue. Oh my God, it was an issue. He was in position. It was the right timing, but he did not have enough faith. Oh, watch, I'm, I'm about to work this. So listen, so like the blind man, we often we often need help um, or from people to get us to Jesus, to get us in, 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 in the right position. So, so what am I doing tonight? I am getting you in the right position. My God, I am getting you in the right position. So just like the blind man who had to get someone to carry him there, so am, that is what the work I'm doing tonight is. I am getting you in position, my God. Listen, because we know in the Bible, in Second Corinthians, it says, "When we are weak, He is strong, and will renew our faith to believe Him." And this is what this is exactly this is exactly what He did in the text. What Jesus did in the text. This is gonna bless y'all tonight. Watch this. So, verse twenty three says, "He took the blind man by the hand." He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside of the village. What did Jesus do? He got him away from the people he was familiar with. Well, God, he got him away from the crowd. He got him away from all the people that were sick like him. Listen, this is going to bless y'all. Jesus took the man by the hand. And we know Jesus had performed many miracles. And if Jesus wanted to heal him right then and there, he could have. If Jesus wanted to just lay hands, bam, you heal, go your way. He could have, but what did Jesus do? It's going to bless you. He took the man by the hand. My God, isn't it just showing, isn't this showing Jesus' compassion and his love for us? He took him by the hand and he led him away. Uh, and he led him away from the crowd. He led him away from anybody else that was doubting. He led him away from the naysayers. He led him away from what he was familiar with. He led him away from who am I talking to? He led him away from people that were sick just like him. He led him away. My God, my God, I love you. He led him away out of the village. 
And the first part of the verse can be viewed as an intimate, like I said, this is an intimate act of love before, oh God, before the miracle happened. Jesus did not have to do that. What did I say earlier? He could have just laid hands on me, bam, you healed. But Jesus does every, if you, if you study his ministry, um, everything that he did was very purposeful. He was very specific in everything that he did. So watch this. So he took him by the hand, led him out, got him by himself, where it's just him and Jesus. The Bible doesn't say that anybody else followed. The Bible doesn't say that anybody else went with him. He said, the Bible says, the blind man and Jesus, and Jesus spat on his eyes. Watch this. He could have simply spoken a word, but he didn't. He, he got him away from the crowd and got him by himself, and that is where he did the work. Listen, some of your greatest and most powerful miracles will take place not in front of a crowd. Who am I talking to tonight? When God is getting when God gets ready to perform a miracle in your life, it does not, he does not need a crowd. And listen, so if you're waiting for the crowd, you're gonna be waiting a long time. Because could it be, my God, could it be that you're not in position because you got too many people around you? Could it be you're not in position because everybody around you is negative? Could it be you're not in position because everybody around you is just like you? Who am I talking to? I told you earlier, y'all, the curse breakers tonight. What is God saying? I got to separate you from what you're familiar with. Oh, oh God, I love you. Watch this. Here we go. So then Jesus go and he does something that we would consider the most nastiest thing you could do. He took the, he put spit on his hand and put it on his eyes. Oh, oh God, listen. So Jesus spat right into the man's eyes. He could have healed this man without spitting. Oh, so, and I told you everything. Everything that Jesus does is very significant. So he could have healed him without spitting, but he did it anyway. So Jesus spat right into his eyes and, and, and then he went on to perform the miracle. However, it was included as a seemingly necessary part. Jesus said, it is necessary that I spit on him. Oh God, listen. He said, it is necessary that I spit on him. And you have to look at the process that Jesus took, that Jesus took. He first he took him away from the people he was familiar with. He took him out of his comfort zone. And listen, the man was, oh God, I love you. Oh God, I love you. The man was blind, so he was completely dependent on Jesus to lead him. Oh God, the people got him in, in the right place where he needed to be, but it was Jesus that had to get him in the right position. Oh. Oh God, listen, listen, here we go. So, so, so Jesus took him by the hand, led him outside the village. That was one. Two, he spit on him. And three, then he touched him. Everything was lining up for a purpose. Watch this. So I had to ask the question because y'all know me. I love to, to study the word and I love the word of God. And I said, okay, so what is it about the spit? Why did you have to spit on the man? Like, what was that for? And so I began to study and I said, well, let me just see what it says about the spit. So most com most commentaries that I could not prepare these, I go through several commentaries. I want to see and make sure I'm, I'm lining up what, what I'm hearing is lining up. So several of the commentaries said that the purpose in Jesus spitting on his eyes, listen, was number one, to moisten them because they had closed shut. Listen, so he needed to moisten his eyes and to open them up. And it said also, the commentary said that slava has healing properties in it. You ever heard somebody say, lick your wounds? Y'all know when you were little, you, you start, as soon as you get a cut, the first thing you do is you start sucking on it. Why? The, the Bible, the, comment, the commentator said that, um, that, that in Jesus' slava, in slava, it has healing properties. Watch this. So in the verse, as Jesus began to put the spit on the man's eyes, the first thing he says is, I see people that look like trees. Number one thing that this would get us to understand, the man was not born blind. Oh God, he was not born blind. So something happened and caused him to go blind. What is God saying tonight? Something has happened that has caused you not to see him in the fullness of his power. But now tonight, I am moistening your eyes so that they can come open. Listen, here we go. So the man's eyes come open and he says, I see men that look like trees. But then let's, let's take a little bit. I did a little bit more research with this 
thing called spit. Watch this. So I found out that that slava or spit is made of 99% water. Oh, God. And we know, and we know, listen, listen, we know anytime you talk about water in the Bible, when you relate water to, to Jesus, when you relate water to anything biblical, it has to do with the spirit. Eh? So what did God do? He put the spirit, he put the spirit in his eyes. Uh, so now he has given him spiritual eyesight. But watch this, I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet. And so also, we, that slava is made up with 99% water. And we, we can agree that water equals the spirit. But slava is also your body's, oh, this is gonna bless y'all. Slava is also your body's natural defense against bacteria. So in Jesus' spit, there was healing. My God, what is God saying on tonight? I am opening your spiritual eyes and I'm healing you at the same time. I told you when we started out, God began to tell me, tell me they're the curse breakers. They're the curse breakers. I'm going to do something with their life if they just get in position. They're the curse breakers. So what God is doing tonight is he's allowing this word to penetrate your eyes, to take the scales off your eyes so you can see clearly. Watch this. Here we go. So if we get down to verse 24, we get down to verse verse 24 and in verse 23, and Jesus asked him, after he touched the man's eyes, he said, do you see anything? Oh, God, do you see anything? Do you see anything? With this question, we see the unfolding and the progression. Oh, God, I love you. Because listen, God could have healed him instantly. But look at what, but look at what Jesus is doing. He's doing it step by step by step. And, and, and you know, whenever Jesus does this, it's for a purpose. If you study his ministry, if you study everything that Jesus did, everything was for a purpose. So why Jesus didn't just lay hands on him and just heal him? Why Jesus didn't say, okay, bam, you healed. Go on about your way. He didn't do that. He took him away from who he knew. He took him away from where he was, um, the what he was familiar with. One. Then number two, he spat on his eyes. What did we say that that was? We will contribute that to the spirit and the healing power. Then he touched it. So three parts are happening. But why didn't Jesus just heal me? Oh Lord, I love you. I, I love the word. I love the word. So so he says, do you see anything? And this is why Jesus is constantly he's he's building. What he's doing is he's building the man's faith. Oh God. So what is God doing tonight? He said, as you're listening to me, your faith is growing. You're like, wait a minute. I get it. I get it. So as I'm talking, as I'm giving you this, this prophetic teaching, I'm showing you what God is doing in your life. What was what was Jesus doing with the man as he took him step by step? First, God is first, he's gonna separate you from what you're familiar with. Then he's gonna get you and fill you with the spirit and give you spiritual eyesight. What are we talking about? We're talking about discernment so you can see things the way God wants you to see them. Right now, the scales are coming off. So you're beginning to see as I'm speaking, but watch what's gonna happen. Watch what's gonna happen. So he looked up and he said, They look like trees walking around. I see people, they look like trees. There was a need for Jesus to do this miracle partially with the first touch and then completely with the second touch. Watch this. The reason for the progression. Oh, God. So I'm going to talk to you all this. I've been praying for a miracle. I've been believing God for a miracle. I've been waiting on a miracle. But this is to show you. Jesus was proving a point. I don't always have to do it instantaneously. Uh, he said, sometimes I have to do it little bit by a little bit, by a little bit, by a little bit. He says, why do I do that? I do that to grow your faith. What did he do with the man? So when he put the spit on his eyes, he opened them just a little bit. And when it opened a little bit, the man began to say, wait a minute, I see people. They look like trees. Bam, now his faith. I know if he did that, it's on now. It's on now. So his faith was growing as Jesus was doing all these different steps with him. Watch it. So that's what the Lord is doing with you tonight. Watch it. So verse 25, verse 25, I'll move quickly. Verse 25. Once again, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. Then his eyes were open and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. The blind man was already filled with excitement from the first, after he put the spit on his eyes. 
When he put the spit on his eyes, he had already got excited. What did that do? That grew his faith. So what is God saying tonight? There are things that you've been praying for and you see a little bit. I see a little bit here and a little bit there. And what you got to read, what you got to be reminded of is that when God is doing that with you, he's trying to grow your faith. Why? Because later on, you it's going to be the same faith. Oh, God. It's going to be the same faith, that faith that's going to bring you out of something even bigger and catapult you into something bigger. Watch this. Because what happens? God will heal you of something. I'm just making, think of something simple. Uh, God, God will heal you of a toothache. And you be like, I prayed and God healed me of a toothache. Like, I can't believe that. That is so crazy. And then the next time something bigger happened, you have you you have a, a stroke or something. And you like, so now your faith is, God, if you heal me of a toothache, watch this, I know you can heal me from this stroke. And so what God will do then is in that process of your healing, because every healing isn't instantaneous, he will grow your so you can't get mad and say, well, I'm still waiting. When the miracle going to happen? He has to grow your faith sometimes. Listen, listen. He has to grow your faith. You can, and I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you the worst thing you can do is be on fire. Listen, be on fire and believe in God so hard for something. And you get upset because you don't get it in the timing you thought you should get. Oh, God, I love you. Watch this. So you have to be very careful of that because God could be growing your faith for something bigger. Oh, okay, I hear you. Because listen, because his thoughts are bigger than our thoughts and he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask for. So we're believing him for the small thing and we get upset because we didn't get the small thing. And Jesus looking like, but I want to give you houses. And you mad because I didn't give you the apartment. Listen, he said, so you have to allow him to do, let patience have her perfect work. Listen, listen, watch this. So what did Jesus do with the blind man? The spit caused his eyes to come open and he could partially see. That grew his faith. Then he said, now, I'm going to touch you again. Because now, you're, oh, because now your faith is where I need it to be. Who am I talking to tonight? When your faith is where it needs to be. When you are in the right position, then the miracle will happen. Who am I talking to? What did I say earlier? And a miracle won't make sense to nobody. Not even you. Oh, I keep telling you your testimony going to be God did. God did. Listen, so you have to get ready. You have to get in position. You have to quit doubting. And you have to believe that God can. You have to believe that God will. Watch this. Watch this, watch this. I got I gotta keep moving. So so we, we can we, we can get four things from this. We can trust that God is aware of the state of our faith. Listen, he knows where your faith is. If your faith was already where it needed to be, he wouldn't have to do, he wouldn't, the miracle would happen. When the miracle don't happen, that's because your faith is not where it needs to be at that present time. So what does Jesus do? He grows our faith. Oh, oh God, I love it. Watch this. He desires, point two, he desires to take us to places of solitude with him that we may otherwise avoid. Oh, God. Listen, the blind man was at the pool of Bethesda with all the sick people that were sick just like him. My God, who am I talking to? You're around the crowd, everybody just like you. No iron is sharpening iron. Everybody around you is just like you. Everybody around you is sick. Everybody around him was sick. So what Jesus did, we had to separate him from what he was familiar with. Listen, listen. And these are the times where you have to understand. And, and this is what I love about God because this is how he worked with me. I remember a point in time when I was screaming and crying out to God, God, I need you to do it. I need you to do it. I need you to come through, God. I need you. I need you. And I was all by myself in that apartment in Rocky and I was begging God, begging God, God, I need you to do it. I need this breakthrough. I need you. I need you. And I didn't get an answer, but my faith wasn't getting wavery. I was just like, God, I don't, I don't understand. And then he began to tell me, he said, you need to go. And I was like, go where? So I was doing something in the house and all the girls were there. And for whatever reason, that morning, the spirit said, get in the car, go to the beach. 
I got in my car, drove down to that beach, got to, didn't have no reservations, no nothing. And I got to the hotel and mind you, I did this in December. So this ain't no prime time and we gonna have fun. No, it's winter time. Ain't nothing to do down there. So I got in the room and I begin to say, okay, Lord, I'm here. What do you want? I said, God, what, what do you want with me? He said, I want you. Ah, listen, he said, I want you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I want you by yourself. He said, don't eat nothing. Shut that door. You ain't going out of it for three days. He said, it's me and you. And he said, when you come out this time, you coming out with the victory. Listen, and I stayed in that hotel for three days. Me, God, and music and the Bible. And God did a, perform a miracle that I can't explain. I can't explain. I can't explain it if, 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 if I tried to. And this was not a miracle of I need some money. Or it was nothing tangible that I needed. I needed a breakthrough in my spirit. And listen, and when I left that beach all the way home, I was crying. Because I was like, God did it. God did it. He told me, and I, I was just like, but, but God, you told me to just drive down here. And I just drove. I didn't know what I was going for. I didn't know. I shut myself in that room and God told me, when you come out, you're coming out different. When you come out, you're coming out with the victory. Why? Because I was entertained. Uh-oh. I was entertaining what everybody else was telling me. I had the faith. I had the faith. But I was listening. Listen, listen. I had so many voices in my ears to everything started getting crowded. Everything started getting jumbly. And I knew God to be a provider. That wasn't my problem. I had the faith, but I was in the wrong position. So I went down. God had to separate me from everybody. My children, my family, everybody. And it was just me and him and worship. And a miracle took place. A miracle that I cannot explain until to this day. When I came back, my daughters was like, Mom. What happened to you? Well, 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 I mean, what's going? They were look just. I mean, they were excited, but they were like, "You like a different person." And I've been like that ever since. And that's been about five years ago. Been like that ever since. Listen, because sometimes God, what the that number two was, He desires to take us to places of solitude with Him that we may otherwise avoid. He separates you from your place of familiarity. He separates you from people that's just like you. He separates you from all the noise that is in your ear. And watch it. And number three, it is often in these times, in these times, that you experience the full healing and the full miracle working power of God. It is not. Listen, nine times out of ten, you don't get your miracle in front of a crowd. Oh God, who am I talking to? You get your, and, and this is what I love because, because I begin to realize out of that, listen, out of my darkest hour, listen, James, out of my darkest hour, God spoke the loudest. Oh, oh God, I love you. Out of my, in my darkest hour, when I couldn't explain to people what I was dealing with, I couldn't, I couldn't put it in the right words. I had went to therapy. I had went to counseling. I had done all that, but I couldn't explain it. But all I knew in my darkest hour, God, I love you. He sat right in. And he gave me a supernatural miracle that money came back. Listen, and he broke the curse of my family. Of genera he broke a generational curse in three days. Oh, oh God, I love you. Let, 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 let me keep moving. Number four, number four. Jesus knows our heart. Jesus knows our hurts and meets us where we're at. Listen, he will meet you where you're at. He went to where, oh God. He went to where the blind man was. Ah, the blind man was at the pool called Bethesda. And there was, what did I say, five big porches there. Listen, and everybody around him was sick. Jesus went straight to him. He will meet you where you are. Listen, listen, that's why I keep telling everybody, I said, when, when this thing, when we sold out international ministries take off October the 1st, it's open to everybody. Why? Because I want you to come as you are and Jesus himself going to meet you there. Oh God, I love you. Listen, listen. So Jesus went right where the man was. Out of all the sick people that was there, he went straight to him. Listen, he went straight to him. 
But I'm going to tell you about one more and I'm going to get off here because I got to get to church. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you about one more. At this pool called Bethesda is another, is another miracle that took place. Um, John 5, 1 through 9, it says, After this, there was a Jewish feast. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem by the, by the sheep gate, a pool called Bethesda, which had five porches, a great number of sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed people were laying in the on the porches. Now a man was there who had been disabled. Oh my God. Who had been disabled for 38 years. He had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and when he realized that the man had been disabled a long time already. Oh God, no. Oh Lord, this, this is about to mess y'all up. Jesus realized that the man had been disabled for a long time already. Jesus said to him, do you want to be healed? Ah, do you want to become well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in the water, someone goes down there before me. Jesus said to him, get up. <laughs> God, I love you. He said, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Listen, and immediately, listen, immediately, the man was healed and he picked up his mat and he started walking. Oh my God. All at the pool called Bethesda. Listen, all at the pool called Bethesda. Listen, so the, 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 um, well, what this says is, for an angel went down and whoever stepped in first was made well. Many sick and injured people went down there because they said when the water is stirred, that means an angel is there. And so they had their hopes up that they would be healed. And they believed this. Watch this. They all believed this. At a certain time, it had to be at a certain, these people, this group of people believed it was at a certain time that this had to happen. So the people gathered around the pool in expectation of healing at the Passover season. Or other feast season. Now a certain man was dead. He had an infirmity for 38 years. And, we, and Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? Oh my God. Do you want to be healed? Because this man has suffered from being um, paralyzed for a long time and had became, oh here we go, the same word. He had became familiar. Oh God. He had became familiar of sitting around the pool waiting to get in the water. He was familiar with this. Same situation. Everybody around you sick. So how are you going to get in the water? You're paralyzed. Do you think they're going to pick you up and put you in the water? No. Why? Because everybody else is trying to get healed at the same time. Watch this. Here we go. So, so when Jesus saw him lying there, for some reason, Jesus selected. I told you he's going to meet you where you at. Jesus selected this man out of the great multitude of sick people. And a multitude of needy people were there. Yet not all is going to bless y'all, but none of them, listen, oh God, oh God, oh God, let me slow down. None of them looked towards Jesus. Oh God, they were looking at the water. Oh my God. See, you can, sometimes you can miss your miracle because you're in the right place, but your eyes are focused on the wrong thing. Again, we go focus with spiritual sight. All those people around the pool, they looking over here at the water. And the one that has healing, the one that can bring you immediate deliverance is standing right there. And y'all ain't paying him no attention. Oh, God. Listen, listen. They were watching the water. So Jesus walks up to the paralyzed man. He asks him, do you want to be healed? We, what? Oh, I'm, I, I'm going to get to that later. I'm going to get to that later. So, so they were in the right position for a miracle, but their heart was not right. Why? Because their heart was telling them, my miracle is in the water. My miracle ain't in the man, Jesus. Oh, God, who am I talking to? Where is your faith? Is your faith for this miracle in your job? If I keep working enough hours, I can get it. If I, if I do this enough, I can get it. What is your faith in? Because their faith was in the water. And Jesus was standing right there, the life giver of all things, the healer of all things. They didn't pay him no attention. They were looking at the water. Watch this. 
So, so listen, it says many of them were, were waiting. It says they sat around the pool called Bethesda waiting. But I love how this commentator, commentator said it. He said they were waiting for a more convenient season. Listen, they were waiting for dreams and visions. They were waiting for a sign. They were waiting for somebody to tell them to come. They were waiting for a particular feeling. They were waiting for wanting to do something spectacular when Jesus himself, ah, was right there with them. Listen, listen. And I love how Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? Oh, God. He says, do you want to be made well? And Jesus wasn't being funny. We all know, we have studied this. We have um, studied this time and time again. Whenever he asks a question, it's to bring your attention to the situation. Why? Because he already know. So he asked the man, think about it. Do you even want to be healed? Because you come in here every year by this pool, and you ain't done nothing. Oh, uh oh, and you ain't done nothing else but come here and sit at the pool. Oh, oh God, watch this, watch this. He says, So, so he spoke with the man. He asked him, Do you really want to be healed? Jesus dealt with the man who had may have had his heart whipped by his legs. Did he even have enough faith? Jesus therefore attempted to build the man's faith. I told y'all before the miracle. He has to build your faith. Watch this. The man Jesus spoke with knew that he was not one of the favored. Oh, he was the underdog. Oh, God. He was the one that everybody stepped over. He couldn't even get close to the pool. He would probably get close. He would probably get close, and then the water stopped doing whatever it was doing. He could not get close there. He was in the right place, but couldn't get in the right position. Oh, but couldn't get in the right position. Watch this. And he had no real hope of being healed. Why? Because he didn't see been paralyzed for 38 years. 38 years. And we complain when it's two days and I ain't got the miracle yet. It's three days. I ain't got the miracle yet. Watch this, watch this. So uh, in the in the eastern, the eastern beggar often loses loses a good living. Oh, listen, in the eastern times, in these Bible days, they were beggars. They sat there, just like y'all see them on the street now, and we wonder why some of them won't go get a job. I mean, you out here all day because they make more doing that than working. Uh, so this is why Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? Because you're a beggar, so I know you're getting funds from people that feel sorry for you. Do you want to be healed? Because you still hang around the same sick people. Do you want to be healed? Because I don't know if you believe in me or you believe in the water. Do you want to be healed? That's what, that's what he asked of you tonight. Do you want the miracle? Or are you relying on your job to get it to you? Do you want the miracle? Because you're still around people that ain't that ain't thinking no higher than you. Do you want the miracle? Because you should be around people that were iron sharp as iron. Do you want the miracle? God, listen, listen. So, so Jesus, so the sick man answered him. No, let, let, let me back up. I don't, don't want to go too fast. I don't want to go too fast. So this is a danger in familiarity. You can be so used to a situation. I share this with all my mentees. You can be so familiar with a voice. You can be so familiar with Dr. Three, Prophets Three, Peaches, whatever you, whatever you call me. Um, you can be so familiar with my voice that when I'm on here saying, you can, you, you are this close to your miracle. When I'm saying, you can show for your miracle. But she say that every week. But she say um, something like that every week. How about you could be so close to your miracle, but everybody in your circle is negative. And listen, let me tell you, when you are around a negative person, that gets in your spirit. And I'm telling you, how, it, 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 Satan is so cunning, but I'm, I'm going to give you how he works. So you can be around people that's so negative. And they could be, they just complain about everything. They just complain. Well, oh girl, it was a nice day. day. Yeah, but it was kind of muggy. Oh girl, you see that they, they giving us lunch today? Oh, I don't want that. I wish they had something else. Oh, okay. Oh, look what I just, I just got this new, this new pocketbook. How much that cost? I mean, just negative. And before you know it, you're the same way. You'll start thinking the worst in every situation. Oh God, I got a bump on my shoulder. It must be cancer. Where that come from? How, why can't just be a bump? Why can't be some bitch you? Why we got to go for the worst thing ever? And, and my God, don't tell them you in a relationship. Well, you, when you married, that didn't work. Why you already date? Or where he come from? Why am I unhappy for you? 
How about I just want to see you happy? How about I just want to see somebody that love you and your kids? Listen, negative people, and they do it so cunning. And what, what will happen is that will get in your spirit. And before you know it, you're negative too. You will wake up. Listen, you will wake up in the morning and be like, oh, God, what about God? Thank you for waking me up. God, I know this job get on my nerves, but I thank you for this job because it could be I didn't have an income. Listen, you got to be grateful for what you have. And so, listen, and I always tell people this, when God can trust you with the little, Oh God, when he can trust you with the little, he'll give you the big thing. And watch this, and I'm, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this because this, this was so, 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 it just blessed me. I remember when I went through my divorce. I just, because y'all know anyway. When I went through my divorce and I decided that what was best for me is to move and get me an apartment. I didn't just get, you know, God bless you. When God bless you, he bless you. So I got like a luxury apartment home. It was real nice. Some of them, most of y'all have been there. And, and so, but I left this huge, beautiful home that was built from the ground up. And the church folk told me, just stay and let it, just stay and, and it'll be all right. It'll work out. You don't want to be a public success and a private failure. And I begin to say, my God, what, 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 is, what is people telling me? I don't understand. I don't understand. And I say, God, I believe that you said in your word that above all things, I should be in good health and prosper. And I'm not in good health. God, I believe in your word. You said you would give me peace that will pass all understanding. I don't have peace in this big house. God, I believe in your word. You said that, that you would give me the desires of my heart. I'm not getting them right now. So God, what am I doing? Oh God, listen. So, so I stepped out on what God was telling me. When he got this apartment, listen, and, and the thing, it, it was so funny because how God worked. When I got the apartment, the lady was like, well, how many bedrooms would you like? Because your broke, you can get how many ever you want. And I said, um, I don't know, because now I got four daughters. Now, why, why I told them people I only wanted two bedrooms, I don't know. But I said, well, just give me two bedrooms. And so they gave me these two bedrooms, but the apartment was nice. It had like a, a living room, a dining room, a, a, a den. It had two huge bedrooms. Two full bad, I mean, it was real nice. And so, and, and, and so I begin to, I begin to say, okay, God, I thank you for the apartment. And I begin to take care of that apartment like you wouldn't believe. And, and I begin to bless God for the apartment. Listen, and, and I had to get, Lord, what did I tell y'all? I had to get all the naysayers out of my mind. I had to get all the naysayers out of my ears. And I began to thank God for what he was doing in that season. And I say, God, I thank you for this apartment. Why? Because I could still be living and have no peace. God, I thank you for this apartment. Why? Because I see my daughters and they smiling from in and they happy. God, I thank you. And I began to just bless them for that little apartment. And y'all know the testimony what God turned around and did. He literally set a house in my lap, built from the ground up with everything I would have wanted. And then they messed around and gave me all stainless steel appliances because they thought I asked for them. And I didn't ask for them. The realtor, she said, girl, girl go and take it. Don't you say nothing. They give it to you. And so this is how God works. Listen, listen, I am telling you, when you're in the right position and when you're in the face of God, this is what he would do. Watch this. So that is the danger of being familiar. That is the danger of having everybody in your ear because you can be so used to a situation that when Jesus comes to get you up, that when Jesus comes to get you up, you up for what you're familiar with. Who am I talking to tonight? You are up for what you're familiar with. I'm telling you tonight, God is telling me to tell you no more opting. No more opting. He said he is coming to get you out of that situation, to place you in the right position for your miracle so you can be the curse breaker and you cannot sit there and be around what's familiar to you. Listen, who am I talking to? You cannot stay around what is familiar to you. Watch this. So verse, verse 7 through 9, the man replies and Jesus heals him. Listen, the sick man answered him, sir, I have nobody. So he's giving him all these excuses of why he's not healed. I don't have nobody to put me in the pool. Excuses. I don't have nobody to get me close enough to get me in the pool. While the water is being stirred, um, they come up and they get in front of me. Jesus said to him, watch, and this is what I love. In the midst of his complaining, Jesus says to him, get up. 
I'm like, I don't need to hear all that. Get up. And isn't it a strange thing? You've been complaining. Oh, God, I love you. You've been complaining all this time that nobody will put you in the water. But it's something about this man named Jesus. When he tell you to get up, you just got straight up. Ah, oh, God. And that's what God is saying tonight. I'm telling you to get up so I can put you in the right position. Watch this. Get up so I can put you in the right position. So Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, 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 the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. The crippled man assumed Jesus knew how things work. At the pool. <laughs> Don't ever assume anything when it comes to Jesus. You got to know him for yourself. Watch this. He assumed that the, um, the crippled man assumed that Jesus knew how things worked at the pool of Bethesda. And he, that is why he went on to explain the situation. Watch this. Quite naturally, the man couldn't think of any other way for his need to be met. The man thought, oh, God, I love you. The man thought Jesus was going to pick him up and take him to the pool. Listen, Jesus, I don't need to take you to the pool. I am the pool. I don't need to pick you up. I am the healer. When I speak the word, uh, who am I talking to? When I speak the word, you're going to get up. Listen, what is God saying tonight? You got to get up. You got to get up. So the crippled man immediately got up. The man was, it was an interesting case of hope combined with hopelessness. Look, he, he had hope, but he still was hopeless. I have hope because I believe that eventually I'm going to get healed. But I'm looking around in my situation. Here we go. That's I keep telling y'all. You cannot be around the wrong people. You cannot get familiar. He said, I'm looking, he's looking around at everybody getting in front of me. I have hope. But the only hope that I have is if somebody get me to that pool. Listen, if somebody get me to the pool, the sick man does what we do all the time. Oh, God, I love you. The sick man do what we do all the time. We limit God. Listen, listen. He limited you. What did I say? He, he assumed, let me explain to you the situation, Jesus. This is what happens around this pool. This is what happened. And Really, what I need you to do, Jesus, is just pick me up and take me to the pool. And we do the same thing. What do we say? Well, Jesus, you know I'm a single parent, and that don't normally happen. You know, I'm a single parent, and my income ain't this. So how am I going to get this much house? And Jesus looking like, but I own everything. Who are you talking to? And we take what we've heard from, 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 from we take what we've heard from the world. We take what we know from our intellect. And we put limitations on God. And he says, I am a, oh God, I love you. He says tonight, he is a limitless father. <laughs> he said, I can do anything but fail. He said, I am sovereign. I do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. He said, so when I get ready to give you the five bedroom house, Kenesha, it'll be done. It won't be with no pressure. It won't be with no sweat. It'll be a sweatless victory. What is he saying? Because when I do something, when I give you something, he said there will be no grief, no sorrow attached to it. Listen, he says, when I do it. Oh, God, I love you. Listen, listen, listen. So he said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Jesus told the man to do what he could not do. Oh, to tell him to do what he could not do. He's paralyzed. Jesus said, get up. So what made this man get up? You've been waiting all these years to get to the pool. Why you ain't get up and going over there? Jesus looked at the man and said, get up. Being paralyzed, it was impossible for him to rise or to take up his bed mat or to walk. But at that moment, Jesus challenged him. Ah, and what is he doing tonight? He's challenging you. He's challenging you. He says, I am telling you. He says, I am telling you, get up from where you are. He says, stop doubting me. He says, stop doubting me. He says, because I can do anything but fail. He says, what I need you to do tonight is to get up from where you are. Get up from that low level thinking. Get up from thinking I don't have enough. Get up from that like that mentality of poverty. He's saying, get up. And what did the man do? What did the man do? He immediately 
really got up. Why? Because Jesus told him to get up. And it was something about Jesus saying that to him that made him move. Just like y'all sitting here looking at me tonight. It's something about what I'm saying that is getting you excited. Because Jesus is saying tonight, I need them to get up and get in position for this miracle I'm trying to give them. Listen, listen, here we go. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. So it's easy to imagine. It's easy to imagine that the man's first reaction was, I can't do that. Why even try? Excuses. Yet something wonderful, something wonderful prompted the man to say, if this man right here, I don't know him. But if this man telling me to get up, I'm going to get up. I'm going to try. What is God saying tonight? You got to be like that man. I don't know. I don't, I don't know a lot about Prophet Street. All I know is she just get on here hollering every, every Monday about the word. But if but the God in her that's telling me to get up, I feel something in my spirit. And what is God telling you? It's just time for you to get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. That's what he's saying tonight. Listen. So because Jesus told him, he asked no question. So don't text me. Ah. Don't text me, don't send me no messages, but what I'm supposed to do next? Because you said, just get up. The man didn't ask Jesus any questions, but doubled up himself, and he walked. He got up, I'm, I'm sure his legs were shaking because he hadn't used them in 38 years, but immediately strength came to where he was, oh, strength came to where he was weak at. Oh, why? Because Jesus told him to get up. That's why I said, when, I'm, when you're weak, he is strong. So he's saying, get up. Some of you got to get up in your mind. Your mindset, your mindset has you thinking less than, and your mindset has you putting limitations on God. And he said, I, I am, I am, I am a limitless God. He said, I can do anything but fail. He said, whatever I give you will make you rich and add no sorrow to it. Listen, watch this. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. So he asked no questions. He got up and he walked. And understand this. Oh my God, this is going to bless y'all. Why did Jesus say, take up your mat and walk? Oh, this is going to bless y'all. When he said, take up your mat and walk, that was a symbol that this cure is permanent. You will never be paralyzed again. Why? Because they use their mat to symbolize this. I'm going to need this the rest of my life because everywhere I go, I'm going to have to have something to lay on. Everywhere I go, I'm going to have to have something to depend on. So what is God saying tonight? Oh, God, I love you. What is God saying tonight? God is saying tonight, I need you to get up from where you are and you won't need that situation again. You won't need to depend on that person again. You don't need to depend on whoever it is you're depending on. You won't have to depend on again. What did God say last week? In this quarter, your testimony will be God did it. He said, whatever been holding you back, it stops tonight. He said, whatever you've been depending on outside of him, stops tonight. You got to get to the place that you understand that Jesus is your own source. Jesus is everything that you need. In him I move and I have my being. In him is the answer. In him is the miracle. What are we doing tonight? We are getting in position. We are getting in position. Listen, so what is God saying? Your miracle is tied to your faith. He's saying he is aware of the state of your faith and what needs to be done to cause it to grow. Like I said earlier, some of us where we are, God has to grow our faith. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. Just trust the process. Just trust the process. God desires to take us to places of solitude with him. He going to get you he want to get you by yourself with him so he can do the work. Watch this. Watch this. And 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 and, and he says, "We must open, we must be open to his pursuit of our souls." Through the presence of the Holy Spirit. So you got to listen to your spirit when it's telling you to do this. Go there. Don't say this. Shut your mouth. Don't be around it. You got to listen to that. And quit saying something told me. It ain't something. It's Holy Spirit. He is a person. I need to teach on that. He is a person. He is a gentleman. He won't lead and guide you unless you ask him to. So listen, you got to understand that you have to be so in tune with the spirit that, that should I go there? Should I should I do this? Should I entertain this person? Should I go in? Because in this hour, you don't have time to waste your time or your oil. Oh God, who am I talking to? You don't have time to waste your time or your oil. Watch this. And, and Jesus knows our hurts and he will meet us where we're at 
in order to take us to a place of complete redemption. Listen, he will not stretch our faith more than we can handle. That is why I'm telling you, he will, that, 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 that bless me right there. He will not stretch your faith more than you can handle. So he won't stretch your faith to the point you're just about to kill over and die. He will stretch your faith just enough to get you, okay, now you got this. Now I'm going to stretch a little bit more. You got that. Now I'm going to stretch a little bit more. Now you got that. And bam, now come the full healing. Sometimes you have to work like that to get your faith where it needs to be. Where it needs to be. Watch this, watch this. So, and lastly, when your faith, when your faith is in the right place, a miracle, a miracle, not may happen, not could happen. A miracle has to happen. These two people, these two men, the blind man, the paralyzed man, they were both at the pool of Bethesda. The Bethesda means mercy. Ah, so when you find yourself at the mercy seat of God, oh God, I love you. He will do the miraculous. He will get you in position. He will grow your faith. He will get you outside of yourself. He will get you with him where he can deal with you one on one. And that is when the miracle will happen. Listen, I'm out of time, but I am not out of word because I got to get to church. We're in revival. But listen, if you want to sow on tonight, I want you to sow. And, and you can put a couple things that I know how to pray. Um, you can sow and you, you can tag it with getting in position. You can tag it with um, um, clearing my eyesight. Whatever you want to tag it with. Or you can tag it with positioning for my miracle. Or waiting on my miracle. Listen, your seed tonight is tied to your miracle. I've gave you, I've given you plenty of scripture. I've given you plenty of, of what to work with to see it. But listen, your seed tonight is tied to your miracle. God has already given us, God has already said what he wanted to do. He already said that, that you're gonna be the curse breaker. He already said that that all he, he's trying to if you don't have the miracle yet, what is he saying? If you don't have the miracle yet, it's because I'm stretching your faith. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that a wonderful thing? God wants to get the miracle to us so bad. He says, okay, well, I'm going to stretch your faith so I can give you the miracle. Oh, God, I love you. If your faith not where it needs to be, I'm going to stretch it till you get there. Oh, God, I love you. So when you sow tonight, because I, I could go I could go off with that. When you sow tonight, when you sow tonight, just know that it is tied to your miracle. Listen, when you put a seed in the ground, listen, when you put a seed in the ground, you put a commandment on that seed and you tell God, God, I'm sowing because I'm believing you. This is a portion of my faith right here. Why? Because we know how we are about our money. But when we sow, we're saying, God, I believe you to do this. I got a seed in the ground and you must, oh God, I hear you. He said, and you must water the seed. When you put a seed in the ground, he got to water it. And if he water it, it got to grow. And then it's going to bear fruit. And the thing I love about, I don't know why I'm talking about the seed, but the thing I love about the seed, watch this, the thing I love about the seed, is it always give back more than you put in. It's not like the tithe. The tithe will do the devour. The tithe do all the things you said in Malachi. But when you talk about the seed, it is the only time, it is the only time the Bible speaks of you giving a seed and reaping a harvest. It's the only time when you can sow and get back more than what you sow. It's the only time you can sow and you can get it back in multiple ways. It is the only time you can sow and the seed never stop growing. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? It is the only time, oh God, I love you. It is the only time you can sow and the seed keep growing. Ah, God, I love you. That, that seed spread to your children's children. Listen, that seed, you come back in multiple ways. It can come back any way God please for it to come back. So again, if you want to sow tonight, the information is running across the bottom of the screen. Many of you know we're going to be going live in person with this um, with these episodes. So beginning October 1st, listen, don't meet me. Don't, don't, don't miss it. I'm going to say don't meet me there. Yeah, don't meet me there. Beat me there. How about that? So at 7 o'clock, you don't want to miss it. It's on my page. Many of my... Um, partners, my visionary team, they have already shared it. Listen, I am excited about what God is going to do. We are building him a kingdom. And I'm telling you, he is so pleased with this work. I, I couldn't have sleep yesterday. I'm just saying, God, you, you are really working this thing. 
Listen, it is about the kingdom. It's not about a church. It's not about a ministry. It's not about Dr. Three. It's about the kingdom. Listen, it is about kingdom business. You got to be there. You got to be there. You got to be there. Listen, you got to be in the place. You got to be in the place because God wants to do miracles, signs, and wonders. You all know how he works. Listen, I love you. I love you. Um, with the love of God, if you need anything, feel free to reach me on, on um, Messenger. If you have my number, you, and you know how to get in contact with me. Listen, what you need to do is so on that word tonight, if God leads you to. If you have a prayer request, send it to me. Listen, I love you. God bless you. And I cannot wait to see you October 1st for our first live service in person. God bless you and I love you.